Hi all. On the five minute auto pairing earlier, I played a 2600 GM, which I felt kind of honored uh, to play actually. And also I played Balm, who's like 1150 on bullet over eight games on the one minute auto pairing for bullet. And he's got a huge uh, five minute uh, auto pairing rating. And actually they met after today. And let's have a look at that game. Let's take it from the black perspective. And let's also do engine checking for accuracy with Houdini. So Balm playing black. Um, I wonder if you can see this analysis uh, window. I hope so. So E4, C5, Sicilian defense. Actually, I'll push it up a little bit more so you can see more lines. You can see the, the three, three lines here. Okay, let's go through this. Knight F3, accelerated dragon by Balm. So he's playing uh, DJ Gajos, who's 2450, slightly higher than Balm on the five minute, but who's a 2600 Fide GM in real life. Balm has no title or anything. So D4, okay, black takes, looks like a normal accelerated dragon. Knight C6, strike at the central squares, gonna Fincetto, gonna put more pressure on the central squares. C4, Maroxy bind, is black worried. Plays knight f6. Okay, he's not minding e5 because uh, if e5, well, knight takes c6 and then e5, there's queen a5 anyway, just picking up the pawn. So e5 is not a problem, it seems. Uh, so knight c3, okay, d6. Now white plays knight c2. So with this move, knight c2, it might be coming back to id5. Bishop g7, bishop e2. And the bishop might also be useful later for bishop f3. Both sides now castle. Technically, it's about equal at the moment, according to this. As you can see, now knight d7 was played, okay. Bishop d2, and now knight c5. Good move, knight c5. And apparently, knight c5 somehow is, uh, it, it, it's slightly tiny bit better for black, nothing to write home about. But now the GM, the 2600, plays b4. And now black voluntarily uh, gives up the dark square bishop. Okay, a bit of a rule breaking move. Uh, but it's to to win a center pawn. It wins a center pawn. So bishop takes c3. Bishop takes c3. Now knight takes e4, winning a center pawn. And black is a tiny bit better. But I would say the position after this is difficult to play. I'm not sure many people would voluntarily give up their dark square bishop. It's the sort of thing you have bad nightmares. You 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 give up your dark square bishop. You weaken your dark squares. And we have all, you know, a lot of us have had experience just getting massacred later, giving up the dark square bishop, even if it's like winning a pawn. So this had to be taken seriously. So bishop b2, and now e5, shutting down the bishop on the diagonal. f3. And now, after f3, this is a bad move. It does weaken this diagonal. And I've suffered at the hands of GMs because of this diagonal, playing a move like f3 or f4 without king h1. And the GM here might have thought, hold on, queen b6. Is no problem. This chrome is really annoying me, uh, so I'm just going to close it actually. Close um, chrome. Sorry about that, just uh, close window. Let's go back. Okay, because, um, okay, so actually, Queen B6 here is a killer tactical move. Uh, even though you might think there's c5 because there's a pawn on b4, it's a killer move. This is the right move in the position. This is the perfect move, you could say. The absolute perfect move by Balm. Queen b6. Because after c5, solve this problem of the knight by playing knight takes c5 now. Because of course there's a pin on the pawn, on the poor bishop on b2. So the GM had missed this. He now takes on c5, but is he going to win d6? Is the d-pawn going to be dangerous? Well, we're going to find out. Queen takes b2, c takes d6. Black, though, look at the evaluation, minus 1.58. Uh, a sort of couple of tactical disasters have just gone on. This bishop c3, paradoxical move for, for winning the center pawn, which provoked f3, which, which weakened the diagonal, and that was pounced on perfectly with queen b6. Nothing spectacular. I guess we could all play these moves as black. Rook d8. Um, now rook d8 is, is a natural move, just attacking the pawn. Okay, 
So king h1. Now bishop e6. Actually, bishop e6 is not one of the top. Oh, it is. Sorry, bishop e6. It comes up. So what does bishop e6 do? Surely not to win a2. If you did win a2, I suppose you'd weaken b3. Um, isn't it a bit greedy? But no. After rook b1, actually the queen can take on a2. Doesn't mind about b7. So bishop, sorry, rook takes b7. And now there is the painful tactical move, which is played. Perfect move again. Perfect. Bishop b3. Just use that pin on the poor queen now. These diagonals are really unbelievably being used resourcefully in this game. So d7. Okay, so the queen takes on c2. Queen c2, bishop takes c2. So black is actually hugely up here. It's now minus 4.42, the evaluation. The poor 2600 GM. His d7 seems to be a major blunder. His best move uh, to, to minimize the damage was like queen a1 apparently. Queen a1, and he's still like more than two pawns down. Takes the knight going to a terrible square. Bishop d5 and black would be much better. But no, he played d7. And now, you know, queen takes c2. Uh, so what was the idea for white? It, the idea was to skewer these two pieces on the c-file. So rook c1, I'm trying to pick up the material. Or maybe uh, trying at some point for rook c8. But at the moment, knight d4 adequately defends c2. So white is just massively material down. Now bishop f5, trying to like target the d7 pawn. Was that actually one of the top moves, bishop f5? Well, it's one of the it's creeping up there, bishop f5. Just just trying to eliminate the d7 pawn. And now king f8, top move, top move, king f8. So the king is also going to gang up on the poor d7 pawn. g4, we're witnessing here close to perf perfection with black in this uh, accelerated dragon. This is how to play the accelerated dragon. So bishop takes d7 was played here. That's actually not mentioned here, bishop takes d7. Bishop takes d7 is not mentioned. What is going on here? Wow. I wonder if we uh, put another line in. Is it there? Bishop takes... No. No. This next move is not listed. Wow. Another line? Not listed. Wow. Bishop takes d7 is not found. What a shock. Okay. So white takes on d7 and after takes, takes. Now black plays knight e6, another non listed move, just knight e6. So actually he's kind of blown massively his advantages. But white now, I think, horrifically blundered now with h4, allowing knight c5, full king, uh, rook and bishop. Oh dear, oh dear. And and here uh, the grandmaster had had enough. He's he's actually after rook d6. Okay, it's not um, massively uh, mature up, but it's enough, isn't it? There's five pawns against three. The outside pawn means the king can just crawl up, and and, and this a pawn is going to be running. Okay, for a while there, the game was quite clinical. I think you've got to agree that the game was actually quite clinically played. But it's possible, it's possible Baum is a normal player. But it just happens to have beaten uh, my 2600 opponent that I played today in, in a very clinical way. So taking on c3 after this b4. And then this queen b6 actually is, is possible because of the knight c5 tactic. So it really is tactic after tactic in this game. And then um, we get this bishop e6 idea to take on, on a2 or just to play bishop b3. Um, and it just goes, it goes massively in black's fa favour here. But for some reason now, um, bishop takes d7 was chosen, just giving back a piece. Um, Really, there was absolutely no need, it seems, for bishop d7. Just blacks, um, you know, a whole piece up. And he could just play a move like bishop e6. Very strange. Bishop e6, but no. 
Bond plays bishop d7. Strange. He's a whole piece up. He's played almost perfect chess, but now he plays bishop takes d7. Okay, so there are some blunders from Bond. So maybe it's not conclusive, but um, it was an interesting game to look at anyway. Um, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.